we also need to come to a point where we actually discern what peace. Whose peace to be? Because I mean, there's the peace of the world. And then there's God's peace. Which peace do you want? Right? Because there's another verse that says that where God says, um, I give you peace not as the world gives it. He's peace and the world's peace and God's peace. Totally different things. Literally. Like when we think of peace in the world, we think of holiday. We think of no worries, no complications. We think of tranquility. We think of oh, just breathe, you know? That's the world. But God's peace is like, even through, even in the middle of the storm, literally, I can still have peace. That's God's peace. Because that peace is saying, God, I trust you. I acknowledge you. I realize that you are going to carry me. Even though I'm in the midst of the storm, even though I'm in this pain, even if I'm in this situation, I know that you're going to carry me through. Like it says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Literally, just God's joy. Like someone asked me um, some time ago, what is your definition of happiness? And I was like, peace content that's my definition of happiness and i feel like that's not um i don't want to use like i don't want happiness because happiness is like the world like, i'm happy because i got a gift happy because i did this happy because it's all about me but when you realize like joy god's joy not world's happiness but god's joy right so what I'm saying is God's peace is peace that you can receive even in, in the middle of the storm. When you're going through something and you're like, God, how do I carry on? And then God is like, my grace is sufficient. My strength is made perfected in your weakness. I will carry you. You just have to trust me. But I'm not going to take, I'm not going to like take away the storm completely. But I'm going to give you the strength and I'm going to give you the joy. And I'm going to give you the peace while you're in that storm. That is true peace. So I'm going to read from um, um, Colossians, 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 yeah, yeah, Colossians 3 verse 10. And it says, and have put on the new, okay, well, before that, it, it, it says, lie not to one another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. And put on the new man, which is verse 10, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created, of him that created him. So understanding that I can only receive this peace if I have accepted the Lord Jesus as my savior, because then God is going to give me his peace. But I can only receive his peace, basically, um, I can only receive his peace after I've accepted him as my Lord and Savior. And when I've accepted him as my Lord and Savior, that's when I put on the old men. Um, when I take off the old men and I put on a new man. Like it says in Psalms, I think, or Proverbs. Yeah. Um, creating me a clean heart, knew the right spirit within me. Right. And when we... When God creates within us a clean heart, renews the right spirit within us, he fills us with more of him and takes out all the toxins and everything that is of the world. And when he renews us and refines us and fills us with more of him, he is a God of peace. I mean, he's the prince of peace. He's the prince of peace. Like, there's no way out that you can find peace but mm -hmm. God because he's the prince of peace. Literally. Like he gives peace like no other. You can't find peace anywhere else but in him. So that's the first step. Or yeah, the first step in finding God's peace. Right. And then Colossians 3 verse 15 says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Where does the peace rule? Where does peace reside within your heart? When we think of the fruit of the Spirit, love, kindness, 
joy, self-control, patience from the heart. And the fruit of the Spirit is from the Spirit, like from the Holy Spirit. And we can only receive the fruit of the Spirit when we have received Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. And the Holy Spirit comes within us. That's when we receive the fruit of the Spirit. When we receive His likeness, His image. And there, in our hearts, His peace will reside. How beautiful is that not? I mean, I'm, 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 I'm in awe of God. Honestly, like, I'm in awe. Literally. So how, okay, so now that's how I find peace. But how do I maintain peace? Right. And then I'm going to read from you from Acts 10, verse 2. And a devout man one that feared God with all his house, which gave alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel coming, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius, when he looked he was afraid. And said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto me, unto him, Thy prayers and thy arms are come up from a memorial before God. So literally, um, firstly, this was a, a devout man of God. He prayed to God. He he worshipped God. He acknowledged God. He lived by God's commandments, God's word. That's the first, how you can maintain, by studying God's word. I mean, if you want to become more like Christ, we need to understand his likeness. How do we understand his likeness? It's by studying his word, how he did things, how he wants us to live as believers of Christ Jesus. And how do we maintain or live up to that standard? Is by understanding, living by his word, right? And... And the angel can come and reassure him that your prayers have come to God. God has received your prayers. And it said that Cornelius always prayed. How do I maintain my peace? It's by prayer. Prayer is one of the most powerful weapons ever. Literally. Prayer. Prayer and prayer. You can only get through storms. You can only get, or even sometimes we're just anxious because we're just anxious. But if we just be like, God, I am anxious. Please give me peace. And you call out to his name. He will answer you. He will not leave you. Like his word, his word assures us that I will never leave you, nor forsake you. Literally, if we just keep on praying. Another thing is that we need to be we need to allow the Holy Spirit to reside within us. Once we let the Holy Spirit live within us, I mean, God's likeness is within us. There's a word that says, great is he that is within us than he that is in the world. So when he's within us, he's going to fill us with his peace. I mean, God is the God of peace. So we need to allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. Just like I said, by praying his word, constantly reading his word. Another thing as well of how to maintain peace is get rid of negativity in any form, whether it's people, whether it's television, whether it's social media. I mean, social media comes with so much pressure. It fills you with so much anxiety because you need to, because you want to be that and you want to do that and you don't have that. Always giving us that anxiety and we need to Filter and filter and let go of things that make us anxious. I mean, imagine if, if we're like, God, I need peace, but constantly we are going back to that thing that is giving, that is bringing anxiety to, to us. How are we supposed to have peace if we are constantly going back to the monster or whatever that is giving us that anxiety, that fear? Music. Oh my word. The music that a lot of people listen 
to these days wow music like for me sometimes when i just feel anxious i'll i'll put on some worship very soft worship music and just worship him i might really even have to pray or read the bible but just worshiping god and just like um detoxing my mind of everything and just worshiping god that is a form of me just allowing god to really fill me with his peace by worshiping praising him acknowledging him even though i feel some type of way i'm like god fill me or god i acknowledge you i just praising him worshiping him um and those are literally the ways that you can maintain peace i mean you're living such a fast life guys wow sometimes i feel like i want to stay at the beach or like stay there forever because i mean when you come back to the city when you come back everything is fast it is academics it is um family fitness everything and we always have to live such a perfect life also being content be content with what you have be content i mean it says in god's word be content be content accept who you are love yourself love yourself be content with what you have be content with the family the body be like girl i'm i'm so fine i'm beautiful like I get annoyed when some guy or someone says you're pretty or you're cute. No, nah, man, I ain't cute. I'm beautiful. I mean, God made me in his image. Nahana, he made me in his image. The great God made. How beautiful must God not be if he made me in his image? Right? And just really affirming yourself with God's word. God's promises. Affirm yourself every day with God's promises. Because sometimes when we are not filled with God's word, the enemy comes and he speaks soft, nothing's into our ear. And we're like, actually, yeah, I'm nothing. And that's where you become. But when you have peace, you accept more. You are more content. You are filled with the spirit. You are more relaxed. You are more, man, you just, whew. guys, when we just allow God and then I just want to end off with another beautiful verse um, that really also just spoke to me, right? So this is 2 Chronicles 20, um, verse 16, right? Um, so... So there was a whole multitude, like there was a war that they had declared against King Jehoshaphat, right? And he was scared. He was like, God, this is, whoa, this is big. This is huge. I, I can't. Like, ooh, God, I need your help. How do I do this? And, um, and then God spoke and he was like, um, tomorrow right go ye against them go go sometimes we have to also just be a be obedient to god's voice right and also it says when you read early in the verse they actually fasted they actually prayed so firstly when you feel like you feel overwhelmed pray to god i can't emphasize that enough pray to god and just like let god fill you with his peace or give you a word just to carry you through and he prayed and he fasted with his community right and then god was like tomorrow go ye against them okay um go go don't be scared go god is gonna reassure you like you can do this sometimes we lose confidence in ourselves but also lo lose faith in god i mean when we pray to god we need to trust him we need to be like god we we, we also can't just pray and not trust god i mean then we're doing you know pray to god and ask him and be like god okay um please 
help but trust him and then he says verse 17 ye shall not need to fight this battle set yourself stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord with you. So here he says, stand still. Don't move. Stand still. Trust in me. Believe in me. Don't shake. Don't fear. Stand still in that in that moment, in everything, in all the chaos, in all the trouble. Stand still. Don't don't sleep, don't stop, don't walk. Wait. Just wait. Wait on me, but trust in me while you wait, right? And he says, fear not, don't be dismayed. Fear not. So God says, wait, be still. Know that I am God. Trust in me. Don't fear. I am here. I will carry you. That's where I'm leaving it all for today. I hope you guys feel encouraged. I hope. I spoke to someone. I hope God is speaking to you. And I hope that you will trust God more and that you will pray to God to fill you with peace. Whatever you're going through, that God fills you with his peace, with his strength, his assurance. Because God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He does not change. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please subscribe. Please share. Please like. Comment, comment, comment. Tell me how you. if you want me to change something. Comment. Let me know how it how it was. Tell me if you enjoyed it. Away, and thank you so much. I appreciate you guys so much. And meet with you. Nothing else.